You are now watching Tales from the Grid. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tales from the Grid. In this episode, we'll be looking at the 7-inch Zords that came in the retro-style packaging. This figure looks well-designed. The size of this figure is bigger than expected. There's paint missing from the waist, legs, and on the saber-toothed tiger and triceratops. The lack of paint details from the waist down cheapens the look. Only painting the main areas on the front of the figure could be a way to save money on paint and manufacturing. I like the size and overall design of this figure. Will I buy? Yes. This figure looks well designed. I like the way the gold paint looks. There's paint missing from the arms, legs, and feet. The lack of paint details from the waist down cheapens the look. Only painting the main areas on the front of the figure could be a way to save money on paint and manufacturing. The missing paint isn't as bothersome on this figure. Will I buy? Yes. This figure looks well designed. This figure is one of the more paint accurate figures in the line. There's minimal paint missing from the legs, arms, and chest. Only painting the main areas on the front of the figure could be a way to save money on paint and manufacturing. The missing paint isn't as bothersome on this figure. Will I buy? Yes. Fans of Ninjacon get an updated figure. Ninjacon is a red repaint of Ninjor. Selling a pre-existing figure with a different paint scheme is a way to resell a figure without making physical changes to the sculpt or adding additional accessories. Ninjacon could be cheaper to produce since it's using less colors. This was an odd inclusion in the series, especially for a first wave release. Will I buy? No. This figure looks well designed. Fans of the black and gold Dino Megazord get another figure for the collection. The knees aren't painted red. Some fans don't like the black and gold Dino Megazord. They claim it's a glorified repaint. Selling a pre-existing figure with a different paint scheme is a way to resell a figure without making physical changes to the sculpt or adding additional accessories. The black and gold version could be cheaper to produce since it's using less colors. The black and gold Dino Megazord has been around since the original, so this repaint doesn't bother me much. Will I buy? No. I'm a fan of the original paint scheme. This figure looks well designed. There's paint missing from the inside of the legs and feet, the bottom of the pelvic area, the forearms, and other places. The sword's hilt should have gotten the white paint with the red dot in the center. Only painting the main areas on the front of the figure could be a way to save money on paint and manufacturing. Despite the missing paint details, it's a good replication of the White Tiger Zord Warrior mode. Will I buy? Yes. This figure looks well designed. I like the way the gold paint looks. This figure has a better paint job on the legs than the Dino Megazord. There's paint missing from the knees, knee guards, and the waist. The staff should have gotten at least a little paint because it doesn't pop or stand out like the actual staff. I would have preferred the Dragozord's eyes being painted black, not silver. Only painting the main areas on the front of the figure could be a way to save money on paint and manufacturing. The arms and legs may be reused from the Dino Megazord. I like this Dragozord combination and this figure came out great. The knee guard should have gotten at least some gold paint on them. Will I buy? Yes. This figure looks well designed. The amount of detail is very good. There's paint missing from the legs, feet, and the bottom of the middle of the pelvic area. It seems like from the waist down, the figure was left unfinished. The Firebird's claw being that unpainted is bothersome. Only painting the main areas on the front of the figure could be a way to save money on paint and manufacturing. The legs may be reused from the Thunder Megazord. The upper body on this Megazord is very well detailed, but the legs are lacking a lot of love. Will I buy? Yes. This is a relatively inexpensive way to collect Megazords and Zords. Megazords and other Zords outside of MMPR are being released. As far as the packaging, the plastic free packaging label should have been put in a place that doesn't interfere with the packaging art. The label's placement isn't consistent on the White Tiger Zords box, most likely because it would have interfered with the Lord Zed illustration. The Wave 2 figures are $1 more than Wave 1. It could be due to the plastic free packaging. In regard to some of the missing paint details, I don't know if paint was left out for cost saving amounts measures or because of difficulties in the manufacturing process, but it would have been nice to have those detailed touches. These are all pretty decent looking figures, and for the most part, they look fine as display pieces. Will I buy? Most of them. Thank you for watching another episode of Tales from the Grid, and until next time, have a good one.